You should not be here. You cannot be here. Your ship was an ark, carrying the races and ideas of the Tau to new worlds, following Commander Shostrak's fleet. You should be with him and your fourth sphere comrades, proselytizing the greater good to new souls. Instead, in the Vashonan, the space between the stars, a dream of corruption swallowed the fleet. Your auxiliaries were lost or twisted to darkness. And in that timeless nightmare, an impossible, many-handed being saved your ship, alone of the fleet. Landed it here, on this Guela hive world, ruined by war, full of hostile aliens, and trapped by storms. As the ranking Chassel not in stasis, the ethereal On Dark has named you commander. He assigns you a new task. To take this planet for the Tau. But first, he demands that you chase down your errant auxiliaries. You are studying a dissected Vespid when Kodaron of the Aircast arrives. His slender frame looms over the body, recoiling a little when he sees the signature deformities. The warped oculi, the unusual patterns grown under the Mesoplarum, the oozing Turgite. It is better dead, he says lugubriously, making the hand sign of the dove. We are lucky we caught it amongst the pack. I am told that our orders say we should eliminate all the Malkor, but our scouts report other Vespit out there who do not bear the Mont Taint. Would it not be right to at least attempt to bring them back to the way? You agree. As they say on Sasir, the way is always open. And as you admit to Kodaron honestly, the troops will come in useful. You order the Fire Warriors to prepare their drones for war. The Vespid unit you recruited has been thoroughly tested by the Earthcast technicians and cleared. The taint seems to have affected only a minority of the auxiliary races. Your relief is unbounded. For you, the Tau was always more than the Tau race. In your cell, your meditations are interrupted. That familiar cloying scent heralds the first amongst your arc's ethereals, the ruthless on dark. Commander, the stars are strange, says on dark. We are adrift in space and time, and the homeworlds are lost. We may be the last of the Tau. You feel the truth of what he says. He turns an iron gaze on you. So when we requested the elimination of the auxiliaries, it was because we could not afford to gamble. Your actions risked our entire civilization, even if they seem to bolster the good. He orders you to purge any auxiliary or Tau that displays any signs of corruption, physical, mental, or spiritual. He leaves, but pauses on the threshold. And you need better guidance. Retrieve the stasis ports. Carefully, the Bentusin technicians have maneuvered the stasis ports from your Ark to the colony city. Inside is your most precious treasure, the sleeping forms of your experts and leaders, engineers, ethereals, fireblades, and the commanders. On Dark comes to you again. Corderon scout drones have identified ancient structures beneath the planet's surface. I must investigate this personally. I need to know we can rely on you in our absence. Can we? His face is impassive, but his hand gestures are hostile, expectant. You reassure him, your loyalty burning in your eyes, and prepare for his expedition. 
This is the first time since your hormone Sassia that you have been without ethereal guidance. Oddly, your daily meditations on the good seem somehow richer, more complete. You feel a oneness with all life, even this planet's innumerable foes. Though you know On Dark has always commanded the use of force first, and now you think how strange that is for someone so committed to the greater good, your inclination is persuasion first. You send the water cast to treat with the human refugees, bringing them to the way, and bend your efforts to a proper harmony and happiness amongst the various races in your city. Surely this is the greater good. It feels like you are doing the right thing. The thing she would have done. Though you swore not to think of her. Ondak sends encrypted signals. He has found something unique under the planet and is attempting to communicate with it. But he is disgusted by your lack of military action particularly against the green-skinned Begel, and orders you to wake a higher-ranking commander to deal with them. It will be their task to lead in the field against the unconvertibles. The Begel, the Swarm Yehi, the giant Gueron Shah humans, their month counterparts, the machine ancients, and worse. There is only one more senior than you, as he well knows. You must wake her. The one known as Chasso Sasia Lolasa, known to the fleet as Commander Coldflame, known to you as Talisira, blood bonded. Watching her in action through the drone link, you are so proud of her, of Coldflame, and terrified for her at the same time. It is not accepted by the Tao to express emotion about kin. But she is more than that to you. You are both bound by the Talisira, the bonding knife ritual, which is tighter than family. So when she returns from her campaigns, her battlesuit ruined and bloodied, you are always waiting for her with the cadre guard, pride and relief poorly hidden behind the formalities. As Talisira, she knows what that means. Your meditation today was on humility and detachment. When you arose, Cold Flame was lounging against your terminal. Friend, I am proud of you. She smiles, her hand gestures jocular and warm. The way of the Tao should not be to shoot first. And don't tell me not to call you friend. The Ethereals aren't here and I outrank you. She chuckles. Where are the Ethereals anyway? You explain that they are either in the field, in stasis, or with on dark, investigating the planet's secrets. Well... <laughs> she laughs. I guess we get to work out what the greater good is today, hmm? I've sent the Watercast diplomats to treat with the human forces, and the survivors tell me that they've agreed to a deal. If we can eliminate their Mont traitors, we'll have a truce. You cannot go against her both from rank and filial pride. But this is a dangerous path. You are pleased with Court Flame for trying, but the diplomatic endeavor has failed. The Imperium had no intention of dealing with the Tao truly. Whilst you were fighting their chaos enemies, they were preparing to attack. Already, Court Flame is turning her troops against them. You stand on a long ridge. The Imperial Army lies spread out before you, fleeing or burning. Insects before Cold Flame's tactical brilliance. Betrayal and surprise were no advantage against your superior technology. You know that other foes await you, but you are confident that she can defeat anything now. She leaves for her next conquest. On Dark has returned, with fewer bodyguards and more scars. You can barely follow his boastful tale of his exploits beneath the planet's surface, but you understand when he gives the planet a new name. 
Mort Vaol, or the Cask of the Anvil. The Ethereals have even spoken to something intelligent in the depths. The Earthcast and Bentusin are trying to understand it, but they say that there is an ancient Arsia device built throughout the world, placed by the Eldari or their forebears millennia ago, to restrain a Necron god. In some way, it is alive and may give them a unique weapon against your foes, one that could eliminate every non-Tau on the planet's surface, your auxiliaries included. When On Dark tells you this is the good, you believe it with fervor. He tells you what you must do. The Earthcast have used the Bantusin labs to establish control of the device, though it will take time to activate. You relay On Dark's plan to command the Cold Flame remotely, and you can hear her audibly recoil. Totova. How is this the good Chassel? The death of our allies? Of the billion Guela on this planet? There must be a better way. I will find it and stop this madness. She cuts the line and is the last time you talk to her. You will always regret not saying more. With so few ethereals to spread calm and so much disorder from the journey here, the Cold Flame Rebellion spreads quickly. Hers is an open creed, accepting Tao, Guela, the auxiliary races, everyone, save for the Ethereals, who are shot on sight. Their Earthcast rebels quickly fortify a human settlement. On Dark stays with you constantly, reassuring you. The Gue Senshi lovers have gathered in one place, Commander. This is your chance to redeem yourself. To kill that traitor, Cold Flame. You look at the bonding knife strapped to your hip. She is all to you. More than the Tao, perhaps? You hesitate. But then, On Dark leans over, overwhelmingly close. You want that, Commander, don't you? And you want nothing more. You want nothing more. The settlement was a classic Kaoyon, a feint to take your forces elsewhere. Inside, it was empty. Worker drones faking activity whilst Cold Flame planned her attack elsewhere. It appears her watercast contacts with the Imperium paid off and they verified her tale about the device. They have turned up in force to prevent you from using it. On Dark watches with you as Cold Flame dies. He tells you that you should be happy that she was a traitor, that her death clears your name, that you are free from your bonds of oath and fealty. You smile and nod, but inside you, something breaks. The ethereal is gloating. He says you'll be able to make use of the technology inside the planet soon, that this world will become a beacon for the greater good. He talks of finally supplanting on Var. You feel like you can't but be happy for him. And yet inside, your broken bond burns, eating away at your reason. In your meditation later, you twist your bonding knife over and over, careless of the cuts it inflicts. Away from on dark, you can only think of her, her empathy. Her courage, her sacrifice. The Cold Flame Rebellion does not end.